My next guest is a professional photographer, but once you see his photos, you'll call him an artist. He's a man with an amazing eye. It's no wonder he travels the world taking photos with his Olympus camera and serving as an Olympus visionary. Please welcome photographer Frank Smith to the counter. Frank, good to see you. Grover, thank you so much for having me. Wow, does this environment uh, inspire you to take photos? Well, this is a place where if you gave me a couple hours, I could set up in here and I could find little nooks and crannies to photograph all around this amazing diner. So yeah, this definitely would yeah. inspire me. <laughs> and it's funny because I, after looking at your photos, I would say you have an eye for all those interesting little nooks and crannies, whether it's a person or a place or a thing. Well, thank you. I mean, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse because the problem is a lot of times uh, you know, my wife and I will go to dinner somewhere like this or, and we'll sit down and mm -hmm. I'll start pointing at all these things. She said, can't you just enjoy the meal as opposed to looking at all those photographic opportunities? So it's good, though. It's good. Now, you brought your camera with you. Can we take a look at it? This is the new OMD EM1 Mark III. This mm -hmm. just came out a little over a week ago, so this is hot off the press here. Right. The technology that they have built into this tiny camera is uh, is just amazing, and it has features that I could spend hours just telling you about on it. But again, as I said earlier, for me, the tools that it gives me and the abilities that it helps me with in my photography has just, it's just been a great asset. Our cameras are our computers. Exactly. Well, that's interesting that you say it because I tell people there really are not cameras. Mm -hmm. They're really computers with optics. Now, when you say optics, uh, define that for me in terms of this camera. Well, in, in the photographic world, it's the glass. and uh, The lens. Yes. Olympus also has a, a large uh, medical component, and of course, all that research is shared, so it's nice that uh, we get the benefit of that in the, uh, in the camera division, if you will. Right, so they might make some kind of medical apparatus that take pictures of some internal organ. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. What is an Olympus visionary, and how did you get into it? Got to be coming up on about a decade, I think, since I've been in the program. And what it is, is uh, Olympus has a dozen uh, what they classify as visionaries. They're, we're kind of ambassadors for North America and all of us with different uh, type of skill sets. Uh, you know, some people are fabulous at taking pictures of babies. That's not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. My area is I like architectural photography, landscape photography, and I do what's called philanthropic photojournalism photography. Those are some of the main cores to what I do. What we do as visionaries is they send us around the country to different photographic events and opportunities and stores. Basically, what's nice is they allow us to do what we want, which is talk about photography. And I think the assumption is that hopefully people will say, those are really nice images. What camera did you use? Which is usually you know, a big part of what the conversation is at the end of a presentation. Now, you live in the Lehigh Valley and Olympus's headquarters? Well, ironically, uh, I live in Center Valley, and the headquarters are in Center Valley, and it wasn't that that was arranged that way. It was one of those coincidences, but it's a nice opportunity that if I need something, I don't have too far to go. How did they come across your work? Well, I've been using their equipment for many years prior to that, and I've been kind of an ambassador because people have reached out to me asking me about the equipment. People have reached out to me and asked me for instruction. And I've been doing this on and off, and at some point they finally said, you know, we should ask this guy if he wants to be in the program. So that's the short version of how mm -hmm. it came to be. What kind of photos do you like to take, and where have you taken them? Because you've been all around the world. I've been very fortunate to have traveled around the world. And, you know, people say, what's, you know, where's your favorite place? Or, you know, and it's always a difficult answer because I have so many favorite places. Mm -hmm. But when pinned to pick one location, I'd probably have to pick the Atacama Desert, which most people don't know what it is. It's the largest arid desert in the world. It's in South America. It spans three countries, Argentina, Peru, and Chile. And at the very core of it, which it sees very few human beings in the course of a year, a million some years ago, as they say, the, there was volcanic eruption, and it has created these amazing, beautiful structures from the volcanic eruption in the middle of this desert and juxtaposition with the sunsets and the sunrise and, and the sand itself. It's just one of the prettiest places I've ever seen. The one place that I've traveled the most, uh, overseas that is, mm -hmm. is uh, in India. I just love the culture, I love the people, I love the colors. In many respects, some of the environments are subdued, but the colors that the people, the, the garb that they wear, just is amazing, From again, from a photographic standpoint. Some of your portraits are 
so compelling. And they always say the eyes are the window of the soul. Uh, do you feel that way as a photographer? Absolutely. I mean, that if I'm going to pick a focus point uh, when I'm uh, photographing people in their environments, it's the eye is what needs to be on point for that. In certain countries in different parts of the world, it's a challenge to photograph some of the people because they, you know, their culture is they don't like that. But the beauty in India is that they actually will be upset with you if they see you with a camera and you don't take their picture. So for me, it's really nice because I'm not, I'm not struggling to try to get an image. People ask me, you know, what do I do to get some of the images? I like to embed myself into the culture. Before I photograph, in many cases, I will make myself known, I'll introduce myself, and if I need a translator, I'll ask that. But again, I'm not taking the camera right out. I want people to feel comfortable with me. I want to know about them. I want to understand who they are. I want to understand their environment, their culture, and all of that. And that's when the magic starts to happen. And that's when I pick the camera up. And that's when I'll start photographing the people. So yes, most definitely. It's not just to sneak up, take the picture. I'm very intentional about the way I do those. Mm -hmm. What would you say was the most challenging place to take a photo? With people, the most challenging place was Morocco because their culture is that they do not like to have their photograph, uh, their self-photographed. However, if it's environmental related, there are parts of the world such as Norway in the middle of snowstorms where I photograph there and you know, you've got 70 mile an hour winds. In contrast to that, it was just in Death Valley several months ago and we had 70 mile an hour winds there, but the temperature was the opposite. We went from dry. So again, it's a, an environmental challenge in many places like this. But again, if you per persist, you can get that ultimate uh, final result, if you will. Right. And uh, you were talking about the Sudan mm -hmm. and the experience you had there because they were going through the birth of a new government. I do philanthropic photojournalistic work and I was there actually on assignment. And when they asked me to come out, they asked, would you be interested in coming during the time frame in which is scheduled for cessation from north to south. I thought about that for a nanosecond and said most definitely. <laughs> they selected me and one other person to be a photographer for the cessation uh, celebration and it was just absolutely amazing to actually witness the birth of a nation and just photograph all the surroundings. I was this close to you, to the generals, to the commissioners, to all of the uh, higher ups on it. So it was just a, again, literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. Where do you exhibit your photos and do you ever provide a narrative? Do you write a story around them? So yes and yes, but the exhibits, uh, that is less frequent. I do maybe one or two a year and typically within this geographic region just because of logistics. As it relates to the narrative component and where else I show my imagery, I do a lot of uh, tips for Olympus and so you can see some of the tips I've done on their website. On social media, I post my images on Instagram and Facebook. And again, what I typically try to do, and people have asked me to do this, is give some background to the image, provide some technical component to it. I'm a strong believer in uh, wanting people to learn as much as they can. So again, I don't have secrets in that regard. And just, uh, you know, I, I, I put it out there in that respect. What photo in your career still resonates with you, that it still is the one, you know? Well, interesting that you say that uh, since I live in Center Valley, I'm near the uh, Lehigh River, and I pegged it as my favorite image of 2017. I was photographing the former Bethlehem steel plant, uh, and I was down at the water's edge, and the sun was beginning to go down, and this, the light was just really, really nice. And as I'm doing that, I look down the river, and I saw a swan, and I thought, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be nice Maybe if I was really good this week that that swan might come up here and he started swimming towards me. And as he got here, I knew where the ideal position would be if it came into the frame. I waited and waited, had all my settings, everything all ready. And fortunately, it swam right into it and was able to capture the image. So that's that's one of my favorite images. Wow. And finally, the other side of it. How about urban photos, skyscrapers, cities, things like that. Well, that's a favorite uh, component of mine, and that, that's one that I've been fortunate uh, to uh, do a lot of work uh, with some of the local developers, architects, some of the new development in downtown Allentown. I have provided probably the majority of the images that you see in some of the promotional materials for those new buildings, those new skyscrapers. Philadelphia and New York are two favorite places of mm -hmm. mine, and I try to find vantage points that people don't typically see or 
feel or you know what have you and look for something that's unique that's one of my favorites well frank i must say one thing that is obvious is your talent as a photographer well thank you that's very kind of you i greatly appreciate it thank and you for having me thank you frank smith a man who sees the world through a very special lens